Represent oh. the grand. Who changed my name? Me? <laughs> Darling, can you bring me Rex, please? Person, the person who is married to you. The, the one that we hid from the kid. Yeah. Thank Are you. we live? <laughs> If we ever do get a Patreon, uh, one of our benefits needs to be watching the people <laughs> down below while the intro is playing. <laughs> We've got Kyle changing clothes. We, we uh, got all kinds of crazy. Tony putting on clothes. Mike just kind of dancing. When did I put on clothes? <laughs> I'm sorry. Getting getting assistance from Darling. Anyway, hello, everyone. Welcome oh, to a cute. double special edition. I'm going to say it. Special edition of Disney Parks Talk Live because this is related to the park. You, you look awfully familiar. I didn't mean to set him off. I'm sorry. You take a tour to Can I back out of this now? Can I? Uh, yes, dear man. Right, you so signed up for this. We are going to be talking about the uh, Star Wars Galactic <laughs> Star Cruiser, which just had tons of details released today, including pricing which is so exciting and uh so we've got a lot of thoughts a lot of opinions a lot of speculation a lot of questions we're hoping that you guys have some comments and questions out there and youtube land so i'm just making some quick introductions my name's doobie co-founder of laughing place going that way we've got mike celestino she's mike celestino the head of star wars so he's the guy in the middle we've got my lovely and talented wife over there rebecca Bottom right corner, we've got uh, Kyle, who is the managing editor here. The guy in the bottom center is Tony Betty, who's just a general peon. And the guy right below me is the vice president and in charge of purple shirts, Jeremiah Good. So let's get started. Quick That's one. a blue shirt. That is not a blue shirt. That is yeah. a blue shirt. Maybe That's it's my monitor. All right. It looks purple to me. Just because he's wearing blue doesn't mean he can't be VP of purple shirts, by the way. Anyway. So we're going to talk about the Star, uh, Star Wars Syndrome. Galactic Star Cruiser here, which um, for those of you who may not know what this is, Disney, when did they announce this? Like five, six years ago? When 2019. Was, I just looked it up. Two years ago. Two years ago. <laughs> New 23 Expo. Announced that they were going to be building a new kind of experience. It is ostensibly ho uh, hotel, but it's more than that because it's actually in story a a star cruiser, a cruise in space where you are immersed in the world of Star Wars. It is uh, a set. You're not you're, you're not going to book two weeks there. It's a set um, number of days, two nights, you know, three day, two night cruise and um, an experience unlike anything Disney or I believe anyone else has ever created. And so, you know, we've all been speculating what exactly. Thank you, Gideon. We've all been speculating what exactly this was going to be. And I think we finally now have a pretty good idea of what it's going to be um and including what it's going to cost so it's got there's a hundred rooms there um pricing ranges from um about forty eight hundred dollars to six thousand dollars depending on how many guests you have in the cabin and that's where it starts two three or four guests um obviously different times of the year different days of the week it could be more but it seems like the, the lowest price two people are going to be able to get on this thing for is forty eight hundred dollars and again, that's for three days, two nights. Um, so it's not cheap, but it is incredible. Um, and I know, Mike, you've written a, a lot about this today. <laughs> and obviously, this is your area. And there's a lot of Star Wars words. So I'm going to let you talk more about it. But I mean, there is a kind of a detailed sample itinerary they put out for each day. And as you go through it, you can see there is... It, it is not just hang out and there's some cool Star Wars stuff. You're really immersed in this world. So, Mike, maybe you can take it from there and talk about what some of the activities are. Yeah, um, I did write this morning, like, a list of the three things I am most excited for about this. And then the three things that I'm kind of, like, still on the fence about. Um, and the immersion is definitely number one, something I've always wanted to do. And we were kind of promised this a little bit with Galaxy's Edge. A lot of bit, actually. But... Um, I think Galaxy's Edge achieves this in like, what, 65, 75% of the time. Um, and, and they didn't quite follow through on the other 25%. But I think 
the idea of the Gal- Galactic Star Cruiser is that it is going to kind of fill that gap where you are going to be like fully 100% immersed in Star Wars to the point where, you know, there's all these characters around you and you can interact with them and, and kind of live your Star Wars existence for a couple of days. Um, the thing that excites me the most is, is a silly one. It's the Sabacc tournament. Uh, I, I've always wanted to play, you know, not so much because I love the game. I have played the game, but just the fact that it is this like fictional card game in the Star Wars universe. It's how, it's how Han Solo won the Millennium Falcon. I, I've always pictured myself like sitting there with the Sabacc cards and, and playing with all aliens and droids around you and everything. And uh, looks like we're going to get pretty close to that experience. Looks like it's more of a holo- holographic version of the game, um, which is cool, too, because it's supposed to be like an upper class cruise ship. There you go. There's the, uh, the concept art there of playing Sabacc on the Halcyon. So that looks pretty fun to me. Um, there's also a story that plays out, obviously, and you're going to help people smuggle things aboard you're gonna take command of the control deck i think right and and there's all sorts of other stuff lightsaber training there's the excursion down to batu which is one of the things i put on my list of things i'm not quite sure about because (laughs) i i feel like paying you're paying all this money to be aboard that ship are you really going to want to go down to the theme park where you could go literally every day if you're like me living in Southern California or like some of you guys down in Orlando, uh, I'm not sure about that part. Um, and then obviously the price is a, a big uh, drawback here. So far, I mean, you know, you're young, Mike, you're going to, you're going to do better in life. So some of the other <laughs> stuff they have, they have like light favor training, uh, bridge training, um, obviously cocktails at the sublight lounge. Um Let's see uh outer rim regalia I just, that can i just jump oh, in real no, quick? Go ahead. let me make one quick clarification i've been saying three days two nights it's really actually two days two nights the third day you just have breakfast and get out so all right go ahead no, like I was, please get out yeah i yeah, was just exactly. gonna i was gonna say um as you as the details drop today um jeremiah tony kyle um, we know what what things uh mike's looking forward to what on what of the announcement today uh grabbed your attention. Uh, I'll start with you, Jeremiah. Um, I I kind of feel like with the video that dropped with the Imagineers from a few days ago, almost everything was laid out. Uh, this just kind of gives us more of the piece by piece. And I'm I'm looking forward to it just overall. The the immersion like Mike is, I I mean I won't show up in my robes or anything, but I'll definitely enjoy going and playing along. Um, I I think that that will be an interesting aspect. I've always been more of the I like to watch, so I I can't wait to see everybody else's reaction to this. Uh, from the diehard kids to the parents like me or my age that are just so excited to be aboard the ship and have the fun. I but, love Mike's reaction to your like me. Mike's like, I just oh, didn't know Jeremiah had kids. No, no. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Keep like the, the ones that have grown up living this with our action figures and actually being able to step aboard this and experience it all. My my brothers come in with a remark. Uh, uh, I can't stop thinking of the line from Muppets Take Manhattan about ocean breeze soap. It's just like taking an ocean cruise, only there's no boat and you don't actually <laughs> go anywhere. Yeah. So let, is, let me yeah. let me ask Kyle. Kyle is one of the more insightful people I know, and he he's very good at kind of digging into stuff. When you read all of this, as I'm sure you did this morning, what were the the big questions in your mind or the big thing there? What was in your mind the most? I'll say something, and this might be out there somewhere, and I'm just not aware of it. My first question was, is this actually going to be blocked out like a cruise to where they're going to have, you know, people are coming on the 27th, and then the 28th, they go to Galaxy's Edge, and then the next round comes on the 29th, or whether it'll be split. So you might have arrivals on every day. My, my understanding is it is on off, like a real ship, yeah. on off, okay. on off. Because it seems like they don't even really need to do it that way. Because I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. That's what my understanding. The from what I've understood from some of like the entertainment aspects, it'll be two days, one day off, two days, one day off, two days. 
because okay. they have to restock the ship and do every restock the hotel I, so a real cruise ship there is a truck that comes to the back of the building right like a real cruise ship can restock <laughs> same day but this needs a day off that's kind of funny <laughs> um how about you tony what struck you reading all these details um you guys aren't gonna like my answer and i i don't think anybody will actually uh how the general public will perceive it and how fast it has to change that's what I'm excited to see. So you're looking because I've to talked failing, to is what you're saying. I didn't Tony. say failing, changing, because I think I've, I've talked to a, about a dozen people already, and none of them grasp that it's like this storytelling land cruise. They think, <laughs> oh, we're gonna go check into the Star Wars hotel, go catch happily ever after, go to Trader Sam's, go back to our Star Wars room. So like, you know, that's... Tony, back in 1955, people did not grasp that this wasn't just your amusement park down the street. But once mm -hmm. they learned that it actually was, it became a huge success. And I feel like maybe we're getting set up for that here. It is a new kind of concept. And when you create new concepts, it takes a while for people to, to mm -hmm. come around to them. But, you know, if you don't throw it far, it's not going to get there, which is the worst analogy ever. Yes, Rebecca. One of the one of the things that grabbed me in reading Mike's column was he talked about, and I, I, I think he, he hit right on the point, and, and that is that the earliest days of this, this is something very new. And so the earliest mm -hmm. days of this are not going to look the same as they will down the road. And so you're kind of in a quandary of, well, is that going to be the better days or is that going to be the lesser days? And you expect the diehard fans are going to be kind of the ones clamoring at the door. But is in essence, it's still going to be working through that during those first few days. So for me, looking at it, I'm there's this part of me that's incredibly envious that I don't have the funds to kind of be there day one knowing that I can also go back again, you know, say day 147, you know, just to, to, <laughs> to see to, what, what the, what the difference is, how, how it will change. Cause I'm fascinated by this notion of immersive theater that is this pricey and exclusive that you do or do not have to engage in, right? You're going to have people who have paid this money and are coming here, you know, to the nines, right? Total, uh, the Twilight tales and the costuming and, and all that. And then you're going to have people like me and Jeremiah, apparently, who kind of want to sit back and watch it all and fold. And I think depending on the mix of that is really going to impact the experience. I'm interested to see how they kind of weave all that and make it work. It's going to be great when all the vloggers show up on day one just to get video of everyone else doing it. And, and so there's no one to do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's your that's your down. that's the best argument to not go day one is to avoid the vloggers. <laughs> yep. But uh, as Mike points out, you know, this it doesn't seem to be uh geared towards the casual fan and and Oh, I I think Disney uh would argue otherwise and right? would uh market it as Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. Wait, wait. You think Mike Celestino that this is geared towards the casual fan? I think Disney would say it's geared toward both. Really? I think I think what Mike's trying to say also that, is actually. that it's being marketed towards all the fans, including the casual ones. But the ones who are really going to grasp into it are the are the so, uh, the hardcore fans. So there are a hundred rooms. Um, so let's say 250, 300 people per cruise. Jeremiah says it's two on, one off. So that's what two cruises a week, two and a half cruises a week. So that's only twelve hundred um, people a week. Did I do my math right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> So five thousand a month, four or five thousand people a month. Yeah, I guess they are going to have. Those to are like rise of the resistance the numbers. <laughs> so I'm just trying to think. You know, how many people out there? Obviously, this does not. Not everyone can afford it. So, I think maybe they'll have a coupon right. day or something for this. <laughs> for this to succeed, um, I think it does need to go beyond uh, pure speculation, but it does need to go beyond just the diehard fans. When you think how many diehard fans can afford an experience like this. It's not, and you're going to have that many, and you may have a mixture as well, right? Because you're you're dealing mm -hmm. with with you know a room of of four people, so in a family, you're going to have varying levels. I mean, Doobie and I, our levels and interest in in uh, Star Wars are quite different, um, just like it and said, and our interest in immersive theater is quite different. <laughs> just like they said in the WDI thing, it's for the fans and those who love the fans of Star Wars. <laughs> So Jeremiah, you haven't talked enough here. What what were your thoughts in reading this this morning and and all that? Um, I 
anybody that's surprised that's followed this, I feel didn't actually follow it. Um, I know Tony is just already ready for it to fail miserably and <laughs> laugh in the ashes because he hates all things that are Star Wars and all things it's not that entirely true. Enjoy. Um, but I think I think we will see it change, just like Mike said. It, there will be some need for change as the time goes on. And, you know, Mike and I, who are the, the target audience for this, we'll go once, we'll love it. Would there be a reason to go back within a month or a year? No. But in two years, you know, when they change up, they flip the script, change up what the story is, that'll be the time when they go back. This isn't meant, just like with everything, it's not meant to be a museum. It's meant to change and evolve as time goes on. If you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you, Walt. Um, wow, that's a big comment. But Joe, you know, he is a big Star Wars fan, and he says that he would rather see something like the Adventurers Club, which is, you know, an in-and-out experience, than something major like this. One of the reasons being the repeatability. So, you know, this, even if they were to change this often, just at its price point for the vast majority of people, this is not going to be a repeatable attraction. And um, It, that it is. is I'm sorry to jump in, but it, it is interesting that this is kind of how they've gone with this immersive idea, like they've gone full in because they've had Batu for a little while now and they haven't even done like kind of an after hours immersive storyline party or or event like a thing of this nature. Um, you know, they're 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 going like all in on on the, uh, you know, 48 hour um, experience. And um, can you. Are you able to pull up the itinerary, Doobie? I know yeah, it's absolutely. pricing absolutely. and details because I thought it'd just be fun to kind of discuss some of the stuff that is going to be done um, as part of your um, 48 hours aboard the Halcyon. Because the way it seems to be um, shaped is that you're going to have kind of an introductory um, experience, very much uh, reminiscent of a cruise ship, right? You have your ship orientation, um, uh, a muster drill. Uh, I do like that they included the muster drill. Right, a captain's rece um, reception. They they describe um, the uh, a fancy dinner. Uh, apparently, the dinners and are going to be at the Crown of Corellia um, Lounge, um, and then what they call a story mo moment. And this seems to be where this immersive theater element really comes into play. That you would engage with. You know, um, what what is your role within the the larger story here? And I'm, I'm curious if these are things that are experienced kind of as, as a whole or will your routine, you know, how large of a group will you be with? Is this something where maybe your group experiences it maybe at 3.30 while the other groups kind of come in? You know what I mean? It's like rooms of a, of a building coming in and all having the same overall experience, but at, at differing um, times. So point. any of these jump out at you guys? Oh, I know the Sabak lessons for uh, Mike C. <laughs> You know, I'm kind of curious, how much does it feel like there's all this, like a real cruise, where there's all this stuff going on, and you can choose what you want to do and what you don't want to do, or does it feel like it's a part of a cohesive story where you're really like, supposed to follow through everything, and, it, you know, because if you don't go to the Sabak lessons, you may miss the point where some spy comes in and says something that's going to play into the story later or something. Well, those are the unexpected story moments that they have scheduled. <laughs> but, but that's a good point you, you you don't want to miss out on that stuff so they kind of need to let you that's know. why it's scheduled so jeremiah <laughs> you've got you've got some in, insight on this well, I, I totally feel like it, you know again the wdi roundtable spelled out for the fans and the non-fans if you haven't watched it go watch that because they tell you it's all going to start from the second you arrive at the port you could be bring, helping bringing um, luggage on board for a spy. And then I'm sure the muster drill, which I laughed just like Kyle when I read that. It, it's why, but again, it's an unplanned story moment that they have to have people there for. It's going to be all tied in. It's all connected. It's Marvel in the air. Go ahead, Tony. Do we? Oh, bye, Kyle. Or not bye. Bye. Who left? Doobie left. Okay. Uh, the uh, the mustard drill is that going to be in story, or is it actually going to be how to evacuate the spaceship slash building? Well, I I my understanding is that part of the story will involve um, 
you know, you in essence kind of, a, a, I don't want to say attack or maybe it is attack, but you know, it might, it might involve that kind of thing. So yeah, you've got to know how the, to the, the former that. safety team representative of another theme park in Orlando, uh, makes me wonder if it's a show one and something actually does happen, what kind of problem that will oh, cause that's funny. That's if everything funny they said is not that's, that's accurate. I'm sure, I'm sure that such, I'm sure that such actual things will also be the case, but it's just a hotel on ground. It's okay. <laughs> um, let's see. I was going to reshare the screen, but now I realized I can't operate that screen. So that wouldn't work very well, <laughs> but, uh, cause I was going to talk about day two of your activities. And on this day is when you're gonna um, head on down to Batu for a little while, right? You'll have breakfast, and then you'll take the shuttle down to Batu, and with you'll have the rise of resistance, and then your story moment, and then uh, Millennium Falcon lunch at Docking Bay, your shuttle back to Star Cruiser. So it looks like kind of a morning on Batu, and then the rest of the afternoon will be events on board the Star Cruiser with lightsaber trading, droid racing, um, model ship building and whatnot. Go ahead, Jeremiah. You look like you're going to say something. That's if you want to. Um, I mean, reading into the, the, the fine print, it says you have one quick service meal, one quick service drink at Docking Bay 7 or someplace else in the park if you want. I, Mike and I talked about this during the last park talk. Um, it is not, you will have set time for rise you'll have set time for millennium falcon you'll have set time for the story point on the land but if you want to spend the rest of the day in the park because this is your only day in the park that's your choice you can go back at some other point and could you not leave the ship if you wanted to though like in the same way you have to go you'll have to go to rise and falcon because that's part of the actual story because they will tie in with the overall grandiose story of everything. Right. And um, Mike pointing out that with only four hours on Batu with Rise and Smugglers, you'll, you know, have a few hours to shop and. and I don't uh, understand that complaint. Five hours out of like 48 hours seems like a tremendous amount to me after paying that much to be on the ship. Like to me, I, I don't know. I don't get why you're going to Batu at all, but. Um, that that seems strange because but you, you can go there whenever you want. You also uh, ju- you also are very askew from the regular guest. You can you've been on Rise of the Resistance twelve times during a media event, not had to worry about. It. You've gone and sat on Batu and did nothing except replace a box. Yeah, but you, if anyone is if anyone is still desperate to go to Batu, it costs far less than paying to go on this uh, Galactic Star Cruiser. I I literally just talked to somebody from Kansas who has not gotten a chance to go on Rise because she's not been able to get a boarding pass. And the the comment after all this was made was, you know, that's a great incentive for me to stay at the hotel is that's included with it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could get a VIP tour for (laughs) $5,000. Well, isn't that how much the the ship is going to cost? It's an it's an interesting it's an interesting um, like balance of cost that that Kyle is is, is bringing up as far as like if you want to you know count it within kind of that Disney um, what rate of pay <laughs> the, the kind of the Disney value scale it's it's the cost is comparative to um, the VIP uh, situation he was describing. Go ahead, Mr. GB. You look like you were going to say something. The food looks good. It does. <laughs> If nothing else, we can eat well. Although, strangely enough, they did not have any pictures of blue milk. Do you think they'll have green and blue milk on tap at the the, the bar there? Uh, can I share what surprised me? Yeah. So, given given the the, pre, the the premium cost and that this is clearly a kind of a premium experience, what surprised me is that there wasn't a mention of a, a bibbity bobbity boutique style experience to kind of transform you. Um, to to in, fully engage in the experience. Um, I thought somebody said you could buy. Uh, I haven't Wars I clothes. haven't seen it, so that's I guess that's what I'm bringing out. If if it if it's out there and I I overlooked it, I would I'm not surprised that it's out there, which is why I'm surprised I haven't seen it. Have you <laughs> seen it, Jeremiah? Did I just overlook it? I haven't seen anything as far as the shopping goes. Um, 
in my my takeaway for the thing that really surprised me is the fine print of alcohol and specialty drinks are not included for oh, no. five thousand dollars. Oh no! <laughs> oh. Gotta draw the are, line. Are they somewhere. included on a Disney cruise though? No. Like I'm comparing it to the real thing and. Yeah. No. Is there a special Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser unlimited beverage add-on? <laughs> Do you know what is included on a real cruise, though, Tony, is water. So, um, I have a question for, You're really for about that. whoever wants to answer. So as you mentioned, you get to dress up pretty much any way you want, it sounds like. What, what do you, what, Mike, I know you have an answer. What would you like to dress as? Oh, I was thinking about that. I mean, I don't know. I always pick the human when I play like Star Wars role playing or whatever. So it's super boring. Um, but I was I, I was wondering, like, are, ma are masks going to be allowed? Like, if you want to be a Rodian, could you put a, a Rodian mask on and walk around? Like, where where will they draw the line yeah. uh, as to what's uh, allowed? It will be interesting to see where they if, if it if it kind of remains within that realm of still the human face. Yeah. Also, I'm also curious if they let you continue to use your wear your costume once you go into that too. Because uh, me too, that would be pretty awesome. That's a reason to go, is so you can be fully on Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do that, and I can't now, so I'm, I would like to be able to do that. The, and I'm that sorry. would definitely be value adding for sure. Juvie, I, you broke up a little bit. Did you say you wanted to wear your Leia outfit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Wow. And yeah, like if, if, if you could, in essence, while you're aboard in the same way that when you're on board a cruise ship, they give you that lovely robe that you can use in the room. But if you leave it there, you don't have to pay for it. Yeah, maybe like a Jedi robe that I can use while I'm on board. But, it, you know, as long as I leave it there, I'm, I'm OK. This is a good question. Jeremiah probably knows better than anyone. Any mention of photography? Restrictions? Uh, there hasn't been any. <laughs> I mean, like I think Mike said way early, we are we are going off of like we're looking at the candy wrapper that we found yeah. on the floor. We don't even know what it tastes like. Yeah. Um, but what? It's Jeremiah's analogy. Just go with it. You know, when you find a candy wrapper on the floor, before you pick it up and eat it, you don't know what it tastes like. <laughs> no. Somebody dropped the candy wrapper. We're looking at the ingredients going, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this or not, so I don't know why I'd buy it. I like Mike's better. That's what he said. That's exactly what uh, Hey, by the way, John uh, comes in here and says he subscribed to the channel. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, John. We appreciate it. How about, let's see, who's the next biggest Star Wars fan? I'm not going to ask Rebecca. Tony, what would you wear? What would I wear? Uh, a Hawaiian shirt with a tropical okay. drink in my hand. Get out of here. And just watch the chaos. He'd come as Wally. Well, that would be funny. He'd come as Wally. Well, it's a totally droid. Well, not really a droid. But... The, the, I'm going to dress as Star Trek nerd. I'm going to be. Crazy. No, I want to do that. No, very. No, because I. There are. I guess I think that's funny. It's amusing. But as a it's nerd not. in other canons. It, it's not. Uh, as a nerd in other canons, if I'm living out, like, pretend this was the uh, Hilton Isla Nublar Jurassic World immersive experience, okay? And it was something like that. If somebody came wearing, I don't know, we're back, a dinosaur story cosplay, it's not the same. It's, but see, that's a good go point. To your because, world. you know, they're going to be varying. Fine, there's the people that don't want to participate. And they, they're, you know, they're they're behind the red line. But even if the people that do participate, you know, there are people like Mike who are going to convince themselves they're all of a sudden living in the world of Star Wars. And there are people like me who are going to make cynical comments every other second. And I'm just going to ruin the experience for Mike. And I mean, that's a, that's a real potential issue. I'm, it's going to be very interesting to see how their cast is trained to deal with with nonsense whether it's kind of this the stick in the med guest or you know some people enjoy like five thousand dollars to be a stick in the mud if tony pays five five thousand in the mud then they're like you're an idiot <laughs> but they're not but, but coming it's along not, if you're there with someone else so you know when i'm there with rebecca who you know well, is having a details. great time enjoying <laughs> Star Wars and doesn't want to hear about Tweaky or Cylons or Daggett. Right, but I just can't help myself. Nope, he can't. And I'm going to ruin experience. Apparently, here. neither can my friends here in the chat. Look at this one: dress up with Battlestar Galactic <laughs> outfits, Cylon alert, Stargate. 
<laughs> the thing really? to do, and this is actually probably possible if somebody put together a group, like organize a message board or something, put together a group to rent out the whole place. Oh, it'd be yes. fun. That um, is the way to do it. And I think it's probably not uh, out of the realm of possibility. for. No, Star I'm Wars willing to bet there are people who are already doing already. that. Already. Yeah. I think that's our plan for next year's summit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But by then we will have 300 employees at uh, Laughing Place. Have you have you all attended places like this that do the historical reenactments where you go and you interact with people and it's a, as like stepping back in time? Uh, yes. Mike and I w went to Evermore, which is something oh, right. that I think is much more closer to this than the historical reenactments because there was quests and that type of stuff. Uh, I mean, the biggest problem that they found at Evermore was there were the diehards that loved it that would come every night. And then there were the people that would show up and like Tony, not have a clue what's going on or not care. I'm just trying just to figure like, out why you two were on a Taylor Swift album. <laughs> but so how These did are they, the people we're talking about? So, so were they, so how, how, so based upon your experience at Evermore, how did they handle such a thing? Kind of bringing along the people who, you know, enjoy Star Wars and wanted a, this unique experience versus the people who were, you know, kind of diving in full force. Well, by the second time I went to Evermore, they had evolved the process so that the story was continuing every day. It wasn't like there was a reset. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually had an ongoing story that if you like missed a weekend, you didn't see part of the story. You didn't know what was going on. So by my second trip, I was totally absolutely lost like we were my wife and i were wandering around like what's going on i thought we were supposed to start at the beginning and do these quests and stuff it was just like if you had missed the previous weekend you just had no idea yeah. which is totally different from how the galactic star cruiser will work but it um, turned into a rin fair type feel of everybody knew each other and you know this king was crowned last week so yeah. we're getting the the drunk time right now um but yeah it when we first went, Mike and I went for right at opening and it was more interactive and you could understand the storyline. And I, I don't know who it was that uh, kind of said, oh, it needed to be more like the Adventures Club. It doesn't need to be more like the Adventures Club because the Adventures Club was people would walk in, go, I don't know what's going and then turn around. <laughs> this needs to be this is the immersion that is needed for a story like this. You get on the shuttle pod after you drop off your car you go you live the the time and then you come back yeah ghost town uh, alive was a, is a good the, this is the actual closest of... thing is ghost town alive okay at not something Farm. you've done kyle no i but disney did legends of frontierland i don't know if it was before or after ghost town alive i don't remember but it was before uh, it was the same guy who designed it uh ken parks who then went over to Nas because they didn't use his idea for galaxy's edge so it all comes full circle. Oh, wow. Oh, that's really interesting. I want to hear more about that later. Yeah, that is really fascinating. Um, so did you participate in that, Kyle? Do you, you, you recall that? I, or just, just something I went on opening day, and I have an article somewhere on Laughing Place about Legends of Frontierland. But yeah, you can see right away that there were people that were coming up. And there were the cast members were pretty good about giving you things like, oh, why don't you go see this person and talk to this so you could try to jump in? But then even on day one, you could tell that there were people that were going to make this their thing because Disneyland has so many annual pass holes, or did. Um, and now... And will again. Sort of. <laughs> Key um, holders. But yeah, you could tell that if it kept going, it was definitely going to be very clickish. Um, but... I think the the key to that was having a bunch of different mini activities that you mm -hmm. could kind of jump in from anywhere. So I am curious, you know, we have an esteemed panel here. I think by 20, by August, 2023, we'll all have a sense as to whether or not this is a success or not as to, um, you know, you just get a feeling in the zeitgeist. Did something work? Did something not work? So I want the prediction from each of you. Will this be a success? Wait, we have to define that term. I think we'll know. You think so? I think anything we look at, we can say, yeah, that was success or that wasn't. You just get a, we're, we're in this enough to know whether something's a success. Okay. Hmm. Oh, before we get, get into that, uh, yes, there will be costumes or there will be attire available to purchase on the Halcyon. Yeah, oh, I, 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 I expect there to be. I just want there to be like a makeover. I want to walk in and be like, make me a Twi'lek. I right. want to. 
I want to say that I heard that somewhere that they are doing that. I don't remember where, but I've consumed so much of this over the last week that I, I don't know if it was. No skill. I have no be... skill of doing that. And I recently had the opportunity to spend some time with a 501st uh, group and the amount of time and effort and everything. I was like, that's, I, I don't that's have That's why I don't think they'll have the boutique there because the amount of time to, you know, especially for a toilet you have to attach a headdress full makeup everything cottage could... industry in development I, right. I envision it now come to my pop century room the day before and make <laughs> well it doesn't make sense to make well, you a toilet a while you're question. there because you're already there um you know the story you don't go from human to pilot in star wars but I could see it being like an add-on where you come a day early in some place and yeah. they, they make you I was going to say that adds a fun question. Is this going to become like extend your vacation by staying at Blankety Blank Resort? Oh, totally. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 100%. And all the website, 100%. it talks about when you're booking, let us know if you want to stay at a Disney hotel before or after your cruise. Yeah, no one's coming for two nights. So oh, um, and I agree. Most, most, most can. I'm not a cosplayer. I just want to do it for two days. Right. Um, yeah. Or like Listen, rent it. I want to be a hut just for this experience. Oh, that would be hysterical. Uh, I'm pretty bearish on the idea. Can overall. you can you do the oh, language? He's excited. <laughs> Don't interrupt, Tony. Okay. So sorry, how are sorry, you? Kyle. Go ahead, Kyle. I was going to say, I'm pretty bearish on the original, like we were saying, I think it'll evolve. So I don't know how long the original concept will stay as pure as they want it to be. So in that aspect, I guess you would say it's probably not a success, but I think that they'll be able to reinvent it. Like, I don't think it's going to completely close down within its first five years or whatever. Um, I think it'll just change. Tony. I agree with Kyle. That's exactly, it's not going to become, no matter what, they'll say it was a success, but we're going to look at, do the feedback, and then they'll change it going on. But I don't think this exact notion will be the big hit right off the bat. Oh, I completely disagree. This will sell out nonstop for at least the first year to two. Yeah, but. Wow. Well, prediction. Yeah, but then That's after good. that. Yeah, I wouldn't have given it that long. I I, I agree the wow. hardcore fans will come running, but then they'll stop. But if, it, again, if they're running for two years. Ma and Pa from that's a Kenosha, success. South Bend, <laughs> who want to take their grandkids who like Star Wars and think it's just the hotel. If they're running, if it's selling out for two years, I don't care. That's a success. They're okay, a hold on. I, <laughs> I want to address something Tony said. Tony, you, okay. keep, you keep jumping on the, if they think it's just a hotel. So you being the Jurassic Park lover, do mm -hmm. guests walk onto the Jurassic Park River Adventure thinking, oh, I'm going to see real dinosaurs? Well, no, because they already had that bar as the, when they walk in the park. They well, set them up. The if you're at a website the clicking, <laughs> here's Disney's All-Star Movies Resort with a giant pongo. Here's uh, the Art of Animation Resort. And here's, you know... Uh, the Polynesian Moana themed rooms. Oh, here's the Star Wars one. Click. Have you clicked on the site that talks about the Star Wars of how right away they dive into the this is interactive, this is real? It, you know, we, yes, we assume that the old saying that tourists leave their brains at the door. This isn't the normal guest isn't going to go, oh, I'm going to stay at the Star Wars hotel. But Disney then, uses kayfabe so often. Like, remember when Joe Rody and uh, Cameron were talking about Pandora being real and how you're actually going to visit mm -hmm. here? So I think yep. they use that so often that some people might actually be confused and just think that Disney's using their magic just language. all part of the story, yeah. Well, it, the first thing on this site, it has the picture of the Halcyon. Prepare for launch on your Star Wars Galactic Star Cruise Adventure. And you then... Know, I don't like okay, the title of Jeremiah. One light years into but I feel like the world can, of Pandora across this you, bridge. You essentially get the same marketing when you go on Space Mountain. Prepare for launch on your, and you know, yeah, you're not actually you're not, going. You're not booking. My argument is Tony assumes that the average Joe Schmo is going to book this hotel and not think it's something more than the pop century. That's based on what I've talked to people. And I say, and then it comes up and they go, oh, the Star Wars Hotel, blah, 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 blah. No. I think. That's not it, what it is. It will require a lot of marketing, but I think yep. no no one's going to walk in that front door thinking that, that's for sure, <laughs> when they lay down that credit card. 
I want to find the opposite frame where they make sure to let you know that even though it has a premium price point, you're not actually going to space. This isn't like oh, a just in the, in the Q and A. It says right. No, I, I, was trying, I, was trying to, I was trying to. I was trying to find that because I'm like I, I'm. I'm more worried about the other end of things. Apparently, uh, like Disney uh, with the making. Is sure that why uh, Branson and Bezos canceled like, the reservations already? Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with Daniel. I don't think anyone's going to go there confused. I think the tough part. Disney will have at least initially is getting people to understand what they're signing up for, why it makes sense to spend $5,000 for two nights at a Star Wars hotel. Um, Cause that's not what it is, but that's, that's a training thing they're going to have to do an education thing they're going to have to do. They do know how to market. Rebecca, um, what do you think? Um, dude. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm because of the current environment, quite frankly, I'm unsure what to expect because I feel like some people are sitting on more money than they usually are because they haven't been going anywhere. And so if you have a dream come true opportunity like this, it may, it may have, you know, kind of a bump because of that as well. So I'm, I'm hard pressed to know. Um, I just, oh, it's just so, yeah, it, it's so niche. No, it's just, I know that there's a lot of Star Wars fans. I just don't know if there's a lot of Star Wars fans who, who want to pay this much for this short, for a 48-hour immersive experience. That's where I'm really torn, and I'm just unsure. Mike, how much have you paid for a signature for a random Star Wars character the most? For an autograph? Yes. I've never paid for an autograph. <laughs> Okay. Oh, take that. How but about you, Jeremiah? You look, at, you look at cons where people pay three hundred dollars for an autograph but that's and authentic. a photo spot. But that's authentic. For a second, I had to. I had to process. You meant conventions. I was like, well, if it's a con, no wonder you're paying. <laughs> no, but 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 that's but that's authentic. That's like an authentic piece of someone that ma made such a difference in their life, and that's where I'm. I'm still very torn on the how embracing of this era of star wars and is there a large enough market for this era of star wars and somebody who is a much more diehard original trilogy person will they still want to do this star wars experience that's where my where that's where i'm i'm still torn because i can't i can't tell yet and it's my and it goes and it goes back to what i see what i saw with star wars with star wars land there was a bump but then you know it, it, it's been very accessible since then. And things aren't just constantly sell, selling, you know, constantly unavailable there. Items go for sale. You know, it's, it, there isn't, there hasn't been the same kind of knock on the door, pounding the door that I expected. What do you think, Mike? Well, I keep asking myself if I wasn't almost certainly going to do this for work, would I <laughs> save up and pay to do this myself and i think the answer is probably still yes so in that way i think the marketing has worked on me as a hardcore star wars fan so that's i guess the best i could say about it that's i mean that's a good barometer no, you are is. most definitely a hardcore star wars fan and you're not rolling in the dough i don't believe you're not <laughs> No, this is, you're, a, no. this is a thoughtful purchase. This yeah, it would be it would be like a, a once purchase. you know a once in a lifetime thing where you're like, okay, well, we'd have to save up for a year and and do this as like our our trip for that year. Is my wife still, and I, so. Is this still yeah. hard to do? Oh yeah, no, everything is now, especially that everything is open. It is still hard to get into Ogas. It's still hard to get a Droid Depot. It's still hard to get a lightsaber. Every day, I see at least five people walking out of galaxy's edge holding lightsaber bags together yeah. and there's like three or four of them okay. so okay i was i was not aware that it was still yeah. a challenge to get those reservations because i didn't have a problem getting ours droid reservations so i didn't i didn't realize that that was still a thing you had to like really make sure you were on top of can i ask mike a follow-up question yeah so you're you said you'd probably pay for it but would you go all out on the experience or keep it like because i because apparently there's different like levels like you can just get the basic cabin yeah. or there's a suite and it goes from what well, four thousand i mean i was looking at the uh, like eight thousand dollars i was looking at that eight person 
cabin or whatever. And I was like, actually, that would be the thing that I would probably want to do is find seven other people mm -hmm. and, and go with seven yeah. friends and really have a great time. Like, I don't know if we'd get the captain's table at the diner at the at the restaurant or whatever, but um, I, I would do the I would probably aim for that eight person cabin. Mm hmm. I agree. The, and, and the bigger the, way, the group, the better. And, and by the way, I I don't know that I don't I don't view this as overpriced be, based upon everything that's offered. I just I'm just trying to figure out where the tar, where the target falls. Does that make sense? It isn't that I, I look yeah. at it and go oh well, I can't see why you would why where's why is it that expensive? I mean I can see why they need well, to it's, why they would price it at this point. It's also just, comparable to a real cruise. Yeah, right. Not at the well, same length. Not yeah, right. Exactly. The real cruise no, is a week long. Length, yeah, <laughs> but yes, yes. But I mean, but you're dealing with a, a right. You're going to be going into this room, and it's going to have this immersive environment to where when you look out your window, you're looking out into space, and and you're going to be encountering all these different kinds of aliens and beings, and and you're you know supposed you know you expect to have droids, and you're going to have this lightsaber. I mean, it it all sounds very in, in amazing and incredible. Are the droids and lightsabers included in this and premium? Well, they're they're there. I mean, they're around. The, the okay, but like, it's not like, like you're going to go home with a droid. It, no, it, it, no okay. it, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to be like go and come home with a droid. No, not that kind yeah, of. Yeah, they, they say food and drink are included, not right. alcoholic. They right. don't say droid is yeah. included. Um, so yeah, here, I, my opinion is we'll look back on this a year or two after it opens and say the thing Disney envisioned did not succeed. Is my humble opinion. And here's what my biggest issue I think. Could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, frankly. And no, I don't think it's overpriced either. And if it were an experience I were interested in, I would pay this for, say, the Jurassic Park experience. That would be mm -hmm. worth it to me. Um, uh, but because it's family, I think we all have know, our things. But yes, right. because it's family, because it's a hotel, so therefore, almost by definition, it's families. Um, it, it's much harder to justify if only one person is that into it. And yet you still have to pay for everyone to do it. If Rebecca wanted to do this, you know, I mean, obviously I could send her, but as a family, it's three of us doing it when maybe one and a half of us are that into it, but you still have to pay for three. And that, that makes things more difficult. I personally think it would have been a better, I would love to be able to compare how this does versus if they had done a very similar experience, but as a one day experience, so therefore, it's much easier for one person of the family to go do it. You can still charge a thousand, fifteen hundred, whatever dollars. So it's still extremely premium, but just remove the hotel aspect and just make it. So therefore, like I said, you can split up families without it being a big deal um, and see how that would have done. But, you know, this is what we've got. And uh, I, I hope it's a success. I hope I'm wrong. And based on Mike's answer, I'm actually encouraged that okay. it will be a success. Oh, I'm this very... is a this is an easy one to answer. What happens if the windows break? You get sucked out into space. <laughs> but don't I'm, scream! Don't bother screaming. I'm just the whole, no one, no one can hear. It. I'm just I'm just really excited that within the midst of all this, this is something really different. Yes. I mean, this is it. it even if this is not necessarily, even if this isn't like you know just a total breakout success, they're trying something new and different and they're going to learn things from this and they're 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 looking at different ways to entertain us outside of the the berm and i'm very i'm extremely excited by those opportunities go ahead Jeremiah. like doobie was saying in 1955 there wasn't a park to compare it to in 1998 disney decided hey, let's try to make a cruise line and mm -hmm. that's become a but they had a jump start from the big red boat <laughs> um you know, it's Disney has taken everything that they've done and found a way to make it a success. It may have taken two decades like Disneyland Paris to fix, right. but they find a way. And I don't think that they're, I don't Disney think this is a, oh, we're just setting this up for failure. I, I think that I they have, so. they've thought behind the scenes of everything. I mean, again, I go back to the WDI video. That is a sure sign that they, are worried that it's not going to be for everybody. That's why they continue to say, however much you want to join in. Yeah, and I just, I'm just unsure. I'm just really unsure on on that because, yeah, no. See, this is the one that keeps popping into my head. Is the is the <laughs> Disney is the Disney Quest model? So I'm just, I'm very, very interested. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. No, no, I don't want to cut you off. Continue. No, go ahead. Um, 
I think the question that needs to be answered is uh, that we've been asking for years is, is there a way for immersive theater to be executed on a grand scale? And that hasn't been proven yet. Um, I've done some amazing immersive theater events here in LA, like Delusion, that are for groups of like eight or 10 people at a time. And this is going to be hundreds of people. It just, it's something that hasn't been done and it ha it's still unproven to have it appeal to the, that kind of a, an audience. So I, if they are able to pull it off, I think it will be like, like my old boss, Ricky Briganti used to say, the future of entertainment is going to be an immersive. Um, mm -hmm. If it's, if, if this becomes proven unsuccessful, I think immersive will always stay at this kind of smaller scale. So I think um, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out in that way. I'm very interested. Yeah, I mean, the if anyone's operation got to pull it... side of me is very curious as to how it's going to all play out. Also, mm -hmm. and if as anyone... a Disney fan, I'm very excited that they're trying it. I'm I'm very excited that this is out there because I just I think it's such a neat it's such a neat concept. I I can't believe that we haven't seen this already on the other end of town with the Hogwarts and Harry Potter because it just feels far more kind of conducive. Um, to this kind of experience, I, I, it feels so much more challenging to me to kind of bring the Star Wars world and empire to to life out, you know, outside of the theme park. Whereas a Harry Potter, it, it feels like you, it, you could have, you know, in essence, built a little school building or something, you know, you know, a little environment that you then transfer. Maybe, maybe they out. had been talking about that and then deemed maybe with people who went over to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge that it might not end up working. You never know, but yep. it's just one of those things. It's just it's just surprising. If, um, if Disney I, I, proves that this is popular, I can almost guarantee that we yep. will see a oh, Hogwarts sure. hotel down the road. I, I still want the Hilton Isla Dublar, though. This is an interesting comment comparing doing this to five nights at Disney World with a three-day ticket. So in my mind, you can still go to Disneyland for $800 a person, Disney World for $800 a person. I mean, if this is what it costs to go to Disney World, for five nights with three days in a row. Granted, that's a much longer vacation, but I can see a lot of people making the choice. You know what, this year, let's try this Star Wars experience. It's only two nights. Then we'll do a staycation or something for the rest of it. Exactly. I, can, so, I can see some of that. Exactly. I didn't process that until this comment. Because you have the port day in Batu, does that mean you get admission to Hollywood Studios? Yes. Included? Okay. Yes. So in yes. theory, you can go off planet also and enjoy the rest of the park, but you won't be able to yes. go. And what happens if you leave the park? And then you can't get back in. We don't know these ifs yet. But yeah, no, not yet. But yes, the admission it, to Hollywood Studios is is included. Yes. Yeah. Disney World is so expensive that the delta for this experience is not as much as I thought. So I'm 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 raising its stock a bit. Oh, do the doobies raising its stock? There you go. Yeah. It, it it isn't the price point that's my that's my hesitation. My my hesitation is the pool from which to pull. I I am I am uncon I I am unconvinced. Speaking of cool, I'm on on how large that is. Uh, does the Halcyon have an indoor one? No. Okay. This, this experience does not feature a swimming pool. It does have this really really so cool chamber Mo though that you can go to. Swimming for Rebecca. All right. Um, anything? Anyone else want to add about the Halcyon Star Wars Galactic Cruiser experience before we shut this off? I'd like to do it, but I am not personally in a place to pay five grand for it so i think a lot of people will be in that position so. it is very it is very interesting um in that way it, it's uh because it's there's so many other things where it feels like well if i just save up for a while you know but oh one, i could there to be fair like i could if i if i really meant that much to me i could save up and do it but there's just so many other things that i when i think about what i could spend that money on in terms of right. other experiences yeah yeah yep. just yeah. lower on the list jeremiah can, you like, answer that? Go ahead. jeremiah can you answer this question i mean do you know uh there um, hasn't been any information but i would definitely assume that when you're on the bridge things will there'll be effects and you know the main story areas there will be effects that tie in when a blast when you get hit from outside on the ship the and, shields and, react and i ex i expect it with the shuttle the way that they showed the image of the shuttle it was to me rather reminiscent of the um ITS that's what it's called yeah and um so i that's kind of where i i was thinking of that too as well giddy 
um, based on the image that they had of the, sh of the shuttle, you know, that will take you to the Halcyon from your check-in point. Well, when right. the Hogwarts Hotel opens, you'll definitely get sprayed in the face with water. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you were going to say something? Yeah, my other weird random question is if I got up at like 3 a.m. and like went and wandered, or like left my room and wandered around, would there be like a dude in a alien costume like, oh, oh, and then he's like, Acting like a weird yeah. Star Wars oh, alien. Like, Will it be like a real like, ship where like certain things close, or can or you? Is like, it just going to be like a custodian vacuuming the yeah. carpet? <laughs> That's what I'd expect. I love that about walking the ship very, very late. Yeah, it's just and just encountering people. Yeah, just random people. The other people like me and the people doing the vacuuming and changing light bulbs and all that. It's really cool. These are all going to be such interesting little things that I hope they. Do. I hope some of these surprise some of these surprise experiences happen like at three a.m. You get you know? locked in your room at eleven. <laughs> they're not on the schedule, so they're not that much of a surprise. Like like you're sleeping, and all of a sudden there's some kind of explosion, and you've got to wake up. And I mean that's I am, immersive. That's immersive. I am a little worried about getting a little claustrophobic because you know we're not used to not seeing outside for that long. <laughs> It's, well, you don't arrive until one, and then the next day you go to bed too, so you'll be okay. I guess so. I guess you're so. out and you're out and about, <laughs> that, and that is a nice balance that they that they have struck with this with this uh, taking you off plant off ship and then back. So it'll be. I'm uh, so fascinated by this, and I can't believe it's only a year away. This is this is, yeah. I think, the most exciting thing Disney's got coming because it's just so new and so different. Uh, well, we get to all be on the you. bridge and watch it land on Batu. Will you like, you know, everybody come to the bridge. We're going to be landing. You can like watch it like, you know, like you watch when we dock at, you I, know, various I places. hope there's some kind of experience for it when you're on Batu. Like, you know, we saw presumably the doors they'll come in if there's some kind of a, I don't know, ceremony or welcoming. I don't know, but something oh, even oh, fun like for the, the people in Batu. Like the Batu people are like, oh, it's the hell yeah. it arrived today. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. Do like a little black and then it, fire. So it's Batu, a... NASA? Is that what you're saying? Do you like a little <laughs> We'll be selling our stuff, yes. our trinkets and everything. Well, the, the, the plan should be if you're just a regular theme park guest and you see the Halcyon guests coming into Batu, you knock one of them out and take their clothes <laughs> and then you just go back <laughs> onto the ship. Mike Celestino's <laughs> discount experience. <laughs> <laughs> It's only 150 high. bucks, then. It's just park admission, and then you get to go on the Star Cruiser. <laughs> Perhaps bail money at some point and later. That's on. so. That I, I was curious about that too, because so many Disney hotels and resorts. I know this is going to be substantially more difficult, but like I can go from Epcot to Yacht Beach Club, Beach Club, Boardwalk. What's there's going to be some kind of room key checkpoint, right? Like from Batu into the shuttle back to the ship yes you will not just be able to get on the shuttle the same well, way you can get on have, the bus you're, to gonna have your special, you're also gonna have a special healthy and wristband yeah right? oh, you're getting a special there, there's a data, data take it down and get the band the magic data band, band. It, yeah boop, boop. The magic band. and that could be in story you're smuggling something by the way tony as uh, oh wrong one as he points out it's not a hotel it's a star cruiser <laughs> yeah, you're not, straight it's a ship I feel like Jeremiah is just so fed up with us right now. And it's going to be making appearances. Probably me. It's, We're it's, all maybe it's so mostly me. It. And at some point, it's going to be making appearances at the Disney Wish, too. You'll be able to see it out the window while you're on the Disney Wish. And the I'm excited Wars. about I'm excited about that, to sit, sit in the, the lounge of the, Disney, of the Disney Wish and see the Halcyon sail by. I have a sneaking suspicion that that's going to look an awful lot like what might be on the Halcyon. Well, of course. Yeah. It's just yeah, going to be well. lifted and put on. No, a no, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. I wouldn't go that far because it's a very different. It's a very different kind of space that you're yeah. that you're dealing with. Good water. Very, so, but oh yeah, it sounds so fun. The it does sound looked, fun. The images looked uh, looked cool too. If I could take the six of us for like two fifty, we'd be there tomorrow. <laughs> Two dollars and fifty cents, or two hundred and fifty. I'd, I'd go all the way to two hundred fifty dollars. Okay. I'd worry about it tomorrow because I'm pretty sure we'd still need hard hats, and I don't know how <laughs> much space we'd have in there. Oh, then we could do it for two two fifty. We would look at our Use your imagination, people. That'll be. Oh, yeah, I think that that'll be the hard part. Will be uh, being is. I hope that they uh, there's plenty of like footage and stuff that comes out. I hope there people are 
plentiful with the sharing I, um, because it'll be it'll be fun to see what comes out of out of this because it's such no, a it, different kind of environment. It's, just it's too bad we thing. we can't do a live stream from it when Mike goes because of the uh, you know delay. The yeah, no. of... is roaming charges still a thing? <laughs> My honest, my major concern is how short it's going to feel. I think, you know, we did the seven night Disney cruise and it was, it went by like an instant and this is two nights. It's going to be so quick. It's well, Mike, quick. you never left the ship. You only played trivia. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we did. We did leave the ship once. Mike yeah. Farnham has asked a very important question. No, that's <laughs> not an important question. Well, they have sports. It's not included in your. Uh, I love room sporks. sporks. They better include it in the price of admission because they're not going to keep. I love sporks. It. Sporks are great. KFC. I'm, well, that'll be fun to see what kind of unique, um, like, uh, all that kind of stuff. Like what t the towel embroidery. If they'll have any of that. If they'll have any of those other things that are like you know we know how many there are so you you know don't take them. They you also said uh, or, or there's like white glove concierge treatment for guests there too, right? Mm. Do you think they'll have a, a shop, a merchandise shop on board? Yes. That's... Yes. <laughs> Seriously? They'll probably have one at the little port you go as you get in and get off the ship, too. We, we didn't even touch on the food, you Good guys. night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Look at the food. Wow. All right. Yeah. We should wrap this up. The food yep. looks good. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, We've been talking about the Galactic Star Cruise. We have so much on this on our website. We have the details of everything released today. We have Mike Celestino giving his opinions. He's a Star Wars guy. Is that Mike waving goodbye or saying you have something to say? I, was waving I think he's goodbye. telling us these aren't the droids we're looking for. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us here today, uh, especially Star Wars Mike. This is his dealie. And uh, we will... What? I don't know. It didn't... Uh, yeah. I mean, I am editing the video, but uh, <laughs> now we're good. <laughs> And uh, we'll we'll be back. When are we live again? Let me check this out real quick. Not Disney Trivia Live tonight because it's Wednesday. But uh, tomorrow, earlier today, August fourth, we were at Hollywood Studios Hollywood early Studios today. Jeremiah. Tomorrow we've got nothing. I don't know when our next live stream is. There Disney is Trivia Live Saturday, Saturday seven thirty. No, there isn't. Nope, there isn't. Not, not, we're not we're this not. week. Oh, we'll that's right. Sorry, I forgot about that. Make sure you like and subscribe. Ring the bell. We will be live, I promise. Bye, everybody.